Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide here in 2022 for Zorbus, which is a fantastic, classic, roguelike title with heavy inspiration from old school, even like first edition Dungeons & Dragons. Now, before we get into the game, just a couple of settings notes that I want to help you with that I needed to tweak to get everything working for myself. First of all, go into the settings, and depending on the monitor size and resolution that you're playing at, adjust the tile size, view width in tiles, and view height in tiles until the game is as clear and large as you would like it to be. It, it's going to be different for everyone else, and, and you also want to adjust your interface zoom until all of this kind of gets right. And you might have to actually get into the game, launch it, and be on the play screen to kind of see what you want your uh, tiles to look like and how big you want them to be, but this will help you out tremendously by just making things more visible. I'm actually playing with the tiles rather large, so it will be easier for everyone to see, uh, and that's the kind of goal I went for, but at default, everything is very, very small, kind of like Dwarf Fortress tile or Cogmind tiny, um, and if you like that, go for it, but I just made it bigger. The only other thing I want to show you very quickly in the settings screen is scroll way, way down. I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll. There's so many things that you can customize in this game, and we'll get to how awesome that is in a moment. But I want you to just go all the way down until you find the section for autopilot, which is basically like your auto move section. And I think um, you should click this box that says draw screen when autopiloting. I do it. And what this does is basically if you push the auto explore button, you will see your character move around so you can see the dungeon as it goes. In, but if you don't have this checked, um, your character will just kind of almost appear to teleport to the new location. And it can be disorienting. If you prefer that, awesome. But I prefer to see my character moving even though it slows it down somewhat. Okay? So those are the two kinds of things that I think uh, are worth messing with. Now... Uh, there's a manual that you can look at at any time to get help with the game. And this is where everything really becomes awesome about Zorbus. It's very affordable. And I think you'll find also that it is an extremely user-friendly game. So I'm going to dive into new game. And on this screen, you'll see that you get to create a new character, okay? And you can either make a random character, or you can use an archetype that is like a pre-build uh, to just kind of get you going right away. And we're going to do that with this beginner's guide and just dive in with a warrior, okay? So if you start the game as a warrior, you're going to be a, a dwarf, and you're going to kind of, um, you can switch um, what your character kind of tile looks like by using these arrow keys. Okay, I'm just going to use the default. And over on the right, you'll see you're a male dwarf. You have 14 starting health and 10 starting stamina. Now, if you mouse over um, any of these stats, you'll see what they do. Okay, and you'll get a great amount of information. Zorbus is actually a pretty easy game in some ways to explain how to play because the developer did such a good job of making it user-friendly. It's like playing an old-school roguelike, you know, um, Dungeon Crawl, Stone Soup, uh, some, you know, uh, Adam, one of these old, old ASCII kind of roguelikes, but what they've done is implement on top a whole host of quality-of-life features that makes uh, your experience more intelligible and easier to get into. That being said, even though the UI uh, and a lot of the explanation is transparent and clear, the game itself is incredibly difficult. And so don't think that you are playing like a, you know, your child's version of a roguelike. This is a really hard game. And I'm just trying to help you understand enough of it so that you can have a good foundation and get into the game and enjoy it more. This is going to be a non-spoilery presentation. I'm not going to, you know, tell you about uh, 
anything beyond just the first few levels of the game, we're just going to kind of start up and talk about strategy and control. So um, you can see we also have abilities, talents, and skills. So skills are what you think they are, you know, like your ability to dodge, disable locks and traps, and there's a ton of locks and traps in this game. Your ability to use magic, fight in melee, fight at range, search, okay? So this helps you search for secret doors and traps. One of the great things about this game, at least in my opinion, is that there are traps and secret doors everywhere. Secret door is more my favorite. I love secret rooms and all the treasure that comes with it. And it tells you on this tooltip here um, that the key ability that governs your ability to uh, to search this skill for example is mind okay so your mind skill is what governs the skill of searching and it says there is no dedicated search command you don't ever have to do it you just automatically search around you in a two-step radius when you move or rest so every time you step around every time you're doing something or even when you're resting you are searching with your character you it's hard to do in poor light um and things get harder to detect the deeper you go into the dungeon. Stealth is um, your ability to be silent and unseen. Uh, and with our character, of course, we're not really going to be doing much stealth. We're not going to be doing much magic at all. Um, we are going to be fighting just sword and board style, or I guess in this case, axe and board. So we don't, we're, we have a minus one, um at magic and all this really means is that like using magic for us is off the table but that's okay we're not even going to be very dodgy we're going to try to wear armor all right then up here you'll see your abilities body motion mind and spirit and these are kind of you know exactly what you'd think they'd be strength dexterity um intelligence and wisdom kind of if in D, &D terms and you begin with this loadout with this archetype of 14, 12, 12. And in green next to the ability, you'll see the bonus you get um, to any skill, action, ability that is boosted or governed by one of these abilities. All right. So we are strong most of all, which is what we want. And then your character gets talents. Okay. These are like actions that you can take uh, that will help you kill enemies and explore. So in our case, we get Shield Bash, which says, with this talent, you automatically make an extra attack with an equipped shield when making a melee attack. So um, what this means is, like, you just hit people or try to with your shield whenever you hit. So it's like you get the benefit of having a shield to block with, and you hit people with it. So um, this is a passive, so you just do it. It's great. Health Surge is like your heal. And um, when activated, all your remaining stamina points, okay, so we have 10, for example, are converted into some health points. The amount that the talent will heal is listed after its name in the quick slots panel and the talent list. And this is fantastic that the game does this. And you'll see when we get into the main game screen what this looks like. And then dwarves have this ability called Stone Sense, um, which if you played old D&D, even in the second edition, dwarves had like detect slopes and grades and stuff and they could just kind of sense how deep you were underground because they're dwarves this is very similar in the sense that you are good at feeling out how much space is on the dungeon and what happens is if you completely explore a level of the dungeon you get like an experience bonus for doing that and um you know, it tells you if there's more secrets to go. So I love this because it's just a big boost to your experience and you can feel confident knowing that you have completed a level of the dungeon. Because as you see in this game, once you complete a level of the dungeon, you go down to the next level and you can never go back up. All right, so we're going to select Warrior and we're going to say this and boom, here we are on the main screen. Now this game has a tutorial baked in and uh, it is very, very helpful at explaining things with kind of like a slideshow. We're just going to do it together, okay? So this is the main screen. Now, remember I said adjust your settings so that you can easily see what's going on around you with the zoom, the tile size, and this is what our tiles look like. Our character is right here, kind of bouncing up and down, having a great time. If you mouse over any tile in the upper right, you'll see what is on that tile. So right now I'm just looking at 
plain floor. Um, and then if I look here, it'll be like, there's the player's handbook. Here's the tips and tricks. Here's a candelabrum. Here's humanoid bones and stuff like that. This is a wall. These are doors. Okay. In the upper left, you see our health and our stamina. This bar right here is our experience bar. The bar below that is our stone sense, which is the percentage of the floor of the dungeon that we've explored. We are currently equipped with a staff. Um, and then in the lower left corner is the mini-map, okay, of the game. Now it tells you right here, welcome to Zorbus. There are books on the floor of this room. Pick them up, open the inventory, and read the books from there. If the game feels too hard, read the combat tips from the Tips and Tricks book. Press H for help. Press the key twice for a tutorial. You can hover the mouse over things to get a tooltip. And... I, lo I have had a great time with this game. I've been having a blast. I've been playing it on stream. Uh, I have some friends who are playing it, and it's just a really cool roguelike, and I can't commend the developer enough for how much help is in the game. So, for example, if I push H, it'll take you to this screen right here, which is something I use all the time, and it tells you what every key bind is set to in the game, all right? So it tells you exactly what is going on here, what happens when you move, how to move diagonally, how to fire diagonally, like every control element that you would want is by pushing H. Now, if you push H again from this screen, okay, you will get into a tutorial that has eight screens. It'll show you some more key bindings of like C brings up your character sheet, for example, I brings up your inventory, and then you can actually, oops, um, use the move uh the arrow keys rather not the mouse click to go between the pages of the tutorial and you can see that like it just tells you what everything on the screen is um movement keys attacks how to navigate the map how to identify objects and creatures how to use ranged abilities how to um fight and understand the combat screen how to use allies and companions and how to even use a controller if you want to do that. So that's just all there at any time. H for key binding, H again for the tutorial. It's fantastic. In the upper right, you'll see that I have Health Surge, which is my ability to heal myself, uh, which I don't need because I don't have any health missing. F1 um, dims my lantern if I want to, but with our character as a dwarf, we're never going to dim it. F2 is a potion of blink. Now, um... If you're coming from Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, for example, this does not function like Blink in that game. Uh, it functions like teleport. So if you drink this potion, you instantly will teleport to a random nearby location. So this is kind of like get out of jail. Like if you are about to die or you walk into a bad situation, you drink this and you will be teleported to another location. It's not a guarantee that you, wherever you're going is going to be safe, but it's you know, better than dying. So it's very, very powerful. Unlike in Dungeon Crawl, it does not take a time to go into effect. You just instantly teleport. And we also have a potion of healing, which can restore 12 health, uh, health points and cure all diseases if we have any. So I'm going to just walk around. Now you can walk around using the numpad. Um, you can click to move with the mouse. You can walk around using the arrow keys. Um, and once you're on a square, you can just push G to pick up something, G to get, and we just picked up two books. Now, if I push I to open up my inventory, okay, you can see on the left column is my paper doll with everything that I have equipped. So right now I have a plus one robe of protection on my body, and if you mouse over this, this is how armor kind of works in this game. It gives you resistances. You don't really have like an armor class. Um, you just have resistances against different types of damage. So this robe of protection plus one gives me, well, one resistance against blunt, piercing, and slashing attacks. It tells you how much it weighs in stones. Then we have our staff. You can mouse over this, and you can see how much damage it does. It does one dice four blunt damage. Gives you a sense of, uh, you know, how much damage per round it does how much defense it gives you. This is our ranged weapon, our sling. Okay, here's how many bullets we have for our sling. And then in the middle is our backpack. We have the player's handbook. We have um, potion of blink, and we have tips and tricks also. 
And then um, we are currently unencumbered, as this shows. It, there are different tiers of encumbrance. And this is how much money we have, which is uh, Zorbits, which is the money, ZB, in the game. Now, on the right as well, there's this awesome kind of like explanation of how to use this. Everything can be done with the mouse or the keyboard. Um, and if you're in your backpack, for example, um, and you can just like click on the player's handbook and open this up. And this is filled with great information. You click on this arrow over here to get more information about the game if you want it. The same thing with tips and tricks. Um, you know, I wouldn't consider it too spoilery. Like, for the most part, it's just kind of helping you survive. So you can either read this to start out with or just read this when you need some help. Uh, it's up to you. All right. So I'm going to look, just walk around and... Um, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to push E, and E is the auto-explore button. When you push E, your character will just randomly go around until they see something, either a threat or an item, and they will stop. Now, because I have enabled the setting like I talked about, you saw my character move, um, and it wasn't an instant teleport, and these green circular dots represent the steps that my character took to get here. So you can kind of see your footsteps in your path. I'm stepping in here, and immediately we see an enemy right down here. It's a Zvart, all right? So this guy right here, you can mouse over him. It tells you in the upper right he is mostly harmless, which is his threat level, and it gives you a flavor text description of him, and it says he has a short sword on him. Now, if you would like, you can push tab, okay? And this is the examine mode. And what happens is, if you're in this mode by pushing tab, you control this box. And whatever you put the box on, it will tell you what's there. So if I mouse over myself, for example, um, or I guess move the box over myself, it'll tell you in the upper right, here's Dr. Incompetent, I have a robe on, here's what I have equipped, here's the items, the consumable devices that I have. Now if I move over this bad guy, it tells you the same screen as the mouse tooltip uh, on it, okay? And you can use this to look at anything you want while, and while you're doing this, the game is paused. And then you just push tab uh, to switch between different targets. And you can see there's actually two Zvarts here. Um, I left clicked on my character for a moment and that actually passes the turn. So another Zvart came onto the screen while I was opening up the examine window, but that doesn't normally happen. That was just my fault because I clicked on myself. Now, what you can do is you can push F, okay? And F is the fire key. And F would be us firing our sling at the Zvart, all right? So if we want to fire at this guy, um, we can push enter, okay? Now, some more information about the Zvart. I'm going to push escape to cancel that. Now, what I have done is pushed the W key to switch from my staff, which is my melee weapon, to my other weapon set, which is my sling. That takes a round, so you can see that both Zvarts have moved up closer to me. There's actually even a Zvart, like, over here, and he's actually rated as intimidating, and I think that's because he has a better weapon than these other ones. I'm not sure uh, exactly. So, now that I have my sling... They all moved up a square because it took me a round to do that, but I can push the F key to open up a fire window. Now, I'm going to push escape to cancel that for a moment. Some more things I want to say about what's going on right now on our screen. Number one, if an enemy has a red health bar below it, okay, that means it's hostile against you. That bar also indicates, of course, how much health that enemy has. The red triangles that are kind of pinching in on the Zvart around the box that is targeting him, that shows you what the active target is. That's important for just like automatically attacking if I want to auto attack, or if I have companions for telling them which target to attack, they will attack whatever um, is targeted if I tell them to do that. So if I push F, um, it opens up the firing window, and this draws a line from you to the target and basically tells you if you have a clear, unobstructed line of fire and can shoot at the enemy. And it shows you I'm selecting the Zvart, and if you push enter, you will fire. Alright, so we fired our sling, and you can see that 
now we have 29 bullets left and a million zvarts are coming on to the screen so this is actually very scary for us this is a lot of things to have to fight on the first floor of the dungeon and so like any good roguelike i cannot just successfully stand here and fight them i need to go to a choke point and fight them one at a time so i'm going to walk backward to this tile right here i'm just going to click on it i'm going to push w to switch to my staff and then now um it's just me and this bad guy right here and i i can left click on him to attack like that um, I can also just walk into him with the arrow keys to attack that way. And I'm just going to bump into him until he dies. When he dies, you get the beautiful and hilarious Zorbus death animation, which is kind of like the sprite explodes. It like splits into two and explodes into blood and disintegrates. You see how much experience you got um, and how much damage you were doing. And by the way... Down here is the combat log. The combat log is phenomenal in this game, okay? If you click on this, you can see the full log, um, and you can scroll this with the mouse wheel, and you can see everything that's happened for the entire combat, right? So here's like, I shot my bullet, and um, we hit it for two damage. Um, he has zero resistance, we did two, so he took the full two damage. Then you can see up here, um, he dodged my attack. He hit us for uh, two because he did two damage minus our slashing resistance to result in one damage. So we took one total damage. We both missed and then we killed it uh, with a hit of four. We rolled a four on our dice four with our staff and we killed it and we got 25 experience. I'm going to push um, escape to get out of that screen. And you can see up here I've lost one health. My experience bar is filling up and my stone sense bar is also filling up. Also important to note at this time is that on the right, my health surge has become activated, and in parentheses next to health surge, it tells you how much you can heal for if you use your health surge, okay? And it also, when it says action cost, that means how much time it takes to use health surge. Health surge does not actually take stamina, because it, um, it, it does, but it doesn't take it by itself. It only takes it when it uses it, and it just takes all your stamina to heal you. So, given that, you don't want to use it for just one health, and there is a cooldown on it, I believe. So don't use this until you have to have it. Now, all the enemies have kind of, like, are no longer in line of sight, but they know where I am. So I'm going to click on myself, all right, to pass one turn. And when I do that, you see right here, it says humanoid footsteps. That means I can't see that there's an enemy over there, but I can hear it. And that gives you an indication that, of what kind of creature is lurking there. I'm going to push the numpad 5 to wait, and this enemy is going to come into range. And he has a question mark on him, which means he does not know we are here. So I could push W and switch to my sling and see what happens. But now they're immediately on me. They, like, saw me. So I'm going to push W again. Um, and you can see that the AI has intelligently walked past me. So now I'm actually surrounded, all right? So we want to kill one of these as fast as possible. And I want to kill this one down here. The reason I want to kill this Zvart down here is because if it, the other Zvart, because I believe there's another one, comes up, I don't want him to be able to get in and replace this one as quickly. So I'm going to hit him. Okay, and you can see we just went to half health, and we did not damage either of them. So what has happened here is this is an unfavorable situation for us to start in. So I'm going to actually, I hate to do this, but I need to drink my potion of blink. And now we teleported over here. What has happened is you can see this is where we started on the minimap, and then now we have moved all the way over here into a different region. This is good for us because we aren't going to die e immediately anyway, and I'm gonna walk down here and go around this hallway, and I'm going to try and rest, okay? And I tried to rest, but this guy has spotted us, so I'm gonna move back. The only thing nice about the spot that I'm at is that um, I, I'm guaranteed to fight one at a time unless somebody opens this door. So I'm gonna push five and wait for this guy to come to me so I can maybe restore a little health beforehand. I'm going to swing 
and we killed that guy and we got the experience. Now I'm going to actually step forward and I'm going to um, hit this guy and he has hit us and we're down to four. So at this point, it is time for us to use um, one of our abilities. So I'm going to um, use uh, our ability. Now you'll see if I mouse over the right column, it's right now just showing the rapier that's on the ground. If I right mouse button on this column, it will change what it displays to my abilities. And I'm gonna use health surge and heal for eight. He hit us for three, but we killed him. So we are not dead, right click to show my abilities, but we are, you know, we lost our potion of blink and we still have our potion of healing, but that was scary, right? All right, so I'm gonna go here I'm going to pick up a dagger and then pick up a rapier and go to my inventory. Now, let's look at the dagger. It is a one dice five weapon, all right? And the rapier is a one dice seven weapon. And the staff does, it's two-handed, um, and it does have a defense, okay? But so does the dagger or the rapier, and these are one-handed. And the reason we want to use the rapier is twofold. Number one, it's more damage, and number two, it's one-handed. So if we get a shield, we can use it. So I'm going to select it, and now we are we have a rapier equipped in our main hand, okay? And you'll notice that my backpack um, sorts the items for you into different categories. So there's like weapons and devices, and this will just continue to do this as you... Uh, get more and more items, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and push escape. And there's a gibberling down here, which is mostly harmless. So I'm going to push W to switch to my sling. And I'm going to fire at this guy right um, here. And I'm going to fire again. And I'm going to switch to the rapier. And we killed it. And we got 28 experience. And um, it's dead, but we're down to one stamina. So I'm going to push S, Okay. Um, and now there's a young thief that has come into view, and he is intimidating, which is a problem. Um, I don't think I have enough time to switch to my weapon, so I'm just gonna, um, wait for him. A Zortard, that's what you are, an idiot chasing ascension. Do you really think that the gods would grant such a things to mortals? Prepare to die, Zortard. And by the way, what he's talking about is the story of the game, um, you will find books that explain the lore of the game. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun story. Just uh, It'll be explained to you very quickly as you play the game. And I'm going to just wait. I'm pushing 5 on the numpad to wait for this guy. I'm going to try to hit him. And we hit him pretty well uh, for 4. And we're fighting back and forth. It's ineptitude. And now he's running away. This is something that enemies do all the time in this game. It's more reminiscent of like Stone Shard. You won't see this in a lot of roguelikes, you know, um, Dungeon Crawl, Tales of Magile, you know, it, Caves of Cud, generally. The, the enemies don't run away. In this game, they do, and you need to kill them quickly, because if they run away and alert another enemy, then your life be can become miserable. So I'm going to push W to switch to my sling, I'm going to push F to target him, and I'm push Enter to fire, and we killed him, and he has a hilarious death animation, he talks trash as he goes out and he has a screaming sound effect. So this game is cool because it has fun sound effects and it just has like a really sense silly sensibility to it, which I love. I'm going to push W to switch back to my rapier. I'm going to try to rest again. Alright, so I pushed S to rest until I'm at full health, okay? But you can push um, D to rest until you have full stamina. And how did I know that H right here? S, rest until you're at full health. D, rests until you're at full stamina. Z, just rest for a round, okay? So now I can go over here and see if there's anything I want to pick up. You can right mouse button over here to see what's on the ground. Um, and what is on the ground? Just corpses. So nothing we actually want to pick up. The plus sign means that there's more than one item on the ground, but those are corpses, so meh, we don't really want that. Now, you automatically pick up money, and I can pick up the short sword as well, which is a one die six weapon if I want it, all right? All right, fantastic. So now, um, <laughs> we had a really, really tumultuous beginning, but we're alive. And that's Zorbus, baby. Like, this is not easy. 
you're gonna die a ton in this game. I find it even harder at the beginning than dungeon crawl, especially relative to how far you get into the dungeon depth-wise. Like, it is very challenging, but also very silly and fun. All right, so I think what I wanna do is kinda move down around here, and yep, there's our buddies. So we still have uh, some more enemies to work out over here, and there are some um, Zyvarts. Now, I'm so zoomed in, and the, the tiles are so big, that uh, there is a slight compromise, you know, sometimes with how much you can see, but you can always just push tab and just look everywhere to get your full field of vision. And I like this just so I can have a, a, you know, a clearer picture that transmits easier uh, for you to see. And so there is two Zyvarts up here, but they're far away. So we can switch over, okay, to our sling, and we're just going to fire uh, here. But um, we cannot hit this guy because we cannot shoot that far, I don't believe. Um, oh, you know what it is, actually? Let me look at this. My sling um, has a range of eight, okay? And so this guy, right, is... Let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he's too far away. So sometimes, you know, you can't shoot if the enemy is too far away, okay? Um, and it says right here in the bottom text box, distance to the current target is 10, so that's too far away, and the range for the current action is 2 to 8, so I can't do it. So that's why I'm not able to take that shot, is because it's out of range. Sometimes if there is, like, fog of war, uh, if there's no light in between, and you can kind of see someone, but you can't see these tiles, sometimes the game will also not let you shoot through that, so just be mindful of that, but all we have to do is just wait one, okay? And we could try again, but it says, you could see that it says the distance is nine, and we just push this to wait again. I'm gonna actually step down. And right now what's happening is that this guy is probably in here where I can't see because there's no light. And it's worth mentioning at this point that I am generating light with my character because I have a lantern as my light source, okay? And so I can see because of that. But if the enemies don't have a light and there's no braziers, nothing lighting the room, then you get to a situation like this where you just can't see. So I don't get to take advantage of the full range. Um, so I'm going to actually step back into this hallway because I know that this guy will come around the corner and I can get a shot on him like this. I pushed five to wait for him. But this is the only way I can take advantage of any kind of range and still maintain my strategic position in the choke point. So I'm going to shoot him and shoot him again, and he's dead. Now, we are running out of sling bullets, so we kind of want to make sure we can find some more of those. If possible, you know? And here's this guy. He doesn't actually see us, so uh, we cannot shoot this guy, though, because... Um, it's around the corner. You can see that the line of fire is blocked by this wall, uh, so we can't shoot that. So we're just going to step back, and if you want, you can yell by pushing Y to make a loud noise, and that should attract this guy. It does. So he didn't know where we were, and you can kind of yell to alert enemies. And we're going to try to fire. We missed, but we hit that time. And we're going to switch... And we killed it. 25 experience. Yelling and luring enemies in is a particularly useful strategy in Zorbus because you get traps that you can deploy. So you can like have a ranged weapon and play a character that sets a bunch of traps and stands back and fires at range and then the enemies try to run at you and they walk through your traps and they die. That's totally something that you could do. I'm going to push S to rest until healed and we're full health. Okay. Now, I'm not using Auto Explore right now because I kind of want to get back to where I was. Now, you'll see that the reason we could see those Zyverts before was because of this brazier up here that was illuminating the area on its own. And that is helpful. Now, you see this big red arrow up here. That's telling me that there's something up there that the game wants me to see, and it's an enemy. 
The, the red arrow is usually pointing at a hostile target that you can see, and if your tile set is large like mine, um, or if the column over here is kind of like blocking you, then it's saying like, hey, there is something hiding behind that, and it just lets you know. Just push tab and kind of look around, and you can see there's a giant rat up there. So that's no problem. Um, it knows we're here, but we need to switch to our reach weapon. Oh, no, it doesn't know we're here. Now it does. And we're in range, so we can take a shot at it, and we do. We hit it. Now, we can't shoot now because it stepped behind this. Um... Oh, no, we could shoot. Well, in that case, we were able to shoot through that, so that was interesting. I'll tell you what. What I always do <laughs> when, in, when in doubt with, like, whether or not the terrain is going to block your shot, um, just try it. Just push enter on it to see if it works, and if it does, then jackpot. All right. There will be an, uh, an X over, like, crossing out the box if you can't hit it. And because there wasn't that X, I looked at it visually and it didn't look right. Like, I had a shot, but there was no X, so I just pushed enter and, yep, boom. Can still hit it. So, do that. Alright. Now, we step into this room and there's writing on the wall. So, if you ever see these, like, yellow lines, um, there is writing on the floor. It says, do not abuse or you will be punished by the dungeon master. And what this means is... There is a sun icon here on the floor. These icons on the floor of the dungeon all mean something, okay? You'll learn what they mean. You'll get a book to explain them. Basically, this right here is a switch. Now, if I click on this switch, it says it's currently in the off position. Do you want to flick it? And if you say yes, um, oops, I said abort. If I toggle it, you'll see that what happens is it like zaps whatever is right there. And you could keep flipping this, and sometimes it'll like start to summon enemies that you can fight for experience. But as it says, if you do it too much, um, you might, you know, summon something that just kills you. And because I don't want to die, I'm just going to kind of leave that there for now. And I'm going to walk back down this hallway to get myself back into the starter room. We made it. All right, now let's see if there's anything around that we want. There's a spear if you want a reach weapon, but... I'm okay with what I have. Now, Zorbus is a game that like starts you out with basically the worst equipment. Like, I got a robe and a staff, and I'm supposed to be a warrior, right? That's terrible starting equipment. But the first level of the dungeon is the place you go to get your gear. It's like, this is where you're going to get all your starter equipment. It's not going to be great, but it's going to be what you need. All right, now, the Shrieker Fungus, you heard it go shriek, and it's... um a mushroom that just like makes noise and alerts enemies to your presence so what you can do is you can hold alt and push down and close the door if you hold alt and push the direction key you can just open and close the doors and that way like if there's anything over there that wants to get me i'm just gonna leave it i'm gonna push e to auto explore and we come around here and i'm gonna push e again and i'm just gonna keep walking around until uh, i find something interesting and there's a giant bat so I'm going to shoot it and I'm going to switch and you see how even when I switched weapons I got hit by the bat and that was because it took me so long to switch weapons in terms of turns and the bat moved so quickly that it was able to move and hit me I just pushed S to rest to full, and I'm going to push E to continue exploring. And there's some arrows. Now, I don't use arrows right now. I don't have a bow, but I'd like a bow. So I'm going to pick up these arrows, and I automatically did. Now, here's a giant centipede. Remember, it's always in your interest to push tab and examine and see. It's mostly harmless, so that can give you a good sense, like, okay, I can take this. And I'm going to shoot this guy. And shoot it. And shoot it. Now... What you'll notice about the giant centipede was it said gets hostile, right? So if you look in the log, I hit it and it says the giant centipede gets hostile. Something about Zorbus that tricks me as uh, a player of other roguelikes is that many animal type enemies will be neutral to you at first. Now remember the color coding of their hit point bar will determine, like will give you a clue of whether or not they're hostile or not. But you can also mouse over them to see that information. And they will be, like, neutral. They won't care about you. But then if you get 
close to them or over a certain amount of time, they will turn hostile. So often I find it's better to just initiate the combat and get those free strikes while they're not hostile to get experience. But if it's too hard for you, then just try to leave it there. Okay, so you can... Ooh, we found a secret door. What you can do is if you're in a situation where there's multiple targets, um, you can just kind of leave the animal that's not hostile and save it for later if you can use that to your advantage. Now, we just found ourselves a secret door. You, you heard the beautiful sound effect. You saw it emerge, and we got 20 experience points just from finding it. I'm going to get a potion of antidote, which is terrific if we ever get poisoned, and we're going to open the secret door, and oh my... There's a homunculus right here, so let's look at this guy. He's mostly harmless. I'm going to push W to switch to my rapier and hit him. And eventually we kill him. We got 82 experience, which is actually pretty good for us. And let's just see if there's anything else in here. I'm going to push Alt and close the door, and I'm going to push S to rest until healed. Now, what you'll see here is that there is a coffin, and it's unlooted. So we can loot this coffin, but... What happens when we loot a coffin, you know? I'm going to actually open the door and loot this coffin. So what I'm going to do is uh, just walk into the coffin, okay? And a lot of things happened all at once. So number one, we sprung a slime trap and we got caught in slime, which means we're stuck. And we opened up a human skeleton who came out and he's dangerous and could kill us in seven rounds so a lot of bad things just happened so let's see if we can pull out of this nosedive with this character if you feel that you're not ready and you don't want to open a coffin like that because enemies could very well jump out then just leave it there all right i was being a little frisky and you know I may die as a result, but my strategy is I don't mind dying on the first floor of the dungeon. I, I don't mind risking it for the biscuit on the first floor because I have very little to retrace if I die, and there's a lot of upside to finding something good. So it's like I have very little to lose. All right, so I'm going to push five and five, and now the skeleton is on us. And so we're going to try to hit him. And we're going to try again. And we're still caught in the slime. So we can't run away even if we wanted to. He's hitting us hard. We're having a hard time with this guy. Okay. So one thing we could think about is... If I look at this dude. Alright. He's a skeleton. So I'm using the wrong weapon for this job. I'm actually going to maybe switch over to my staff... Uh, because it's blunt. Now, I could very well die doing this, but I need to do it anyway. All right, I'm on my staff, and I'm going to try to hit him. And now we can actually hit him, right? Because he has low resistance to blunt damage. And we killed him. And I'm going to push Alt and close the door. And I'm going to push S to save it. So, if it says dangerous, you could die. But keep in mind, we had both Health Surge and a Potion of Healing as an emergency there. And, you know, it's could die. Like, you don't know. Okay? And what's in the chest? Ah, look what we found. Hide armor, leather armor, a club, a great mace, and an Urgrash. Okay? So, this does, you know, a huge amount of damage. Um, it can deal either slashing or piercing damage. The Great Mace does 2 dice 6 damage, um, and it's rather slow, right? And then the Club does 1 dice 6. I'm going to take the Great Mace, and I'm going to take the Hide Armor. Okay, let's look at the differences between these armors, actually. Okay, so... No, the Leather Armor... <laughs> Excuse me. The Leather Armor is actually just strictly better. So when you look at them, the Leather Armor is just lighter but it has the same resistances, okay? And we'll take it. Now, what you want to look at... There's a few things I haven't talked about yet. I'm going to push escape and just... Um, we got 27 uh, Zorbits also out of that coffin. I'm going to push my inventory. And in here, what you're going to see is that... Um, some of my items have a green number in the right column on the backpack. 
And if there is a green number here in the upper right of the tooltip description in the right column where it says potion of antidote, you'll see that this has a value of 29 Zorbit. So this green number is the value. This is how much you can sell it for at the shop when you find it. Nothing else has any value. So all of these other weapons and armors and things, you know, they're useless. They don't sell for anything. They're, they're, they're only good if I want to use them with my character. I'm going to equip the Great Mace because I don't yet have a shield. You might as well carry stuff until you become encumbered. And because we're strong, we can carry a lot. Now, armor, if you look at this heavier armor, like the Robe of Protection, it gives you no minus to magic. But the leather armor, you see it gives you magic minus two. And this is kind of the game's built-in way of basically saying, hey, if you want to use magic, it's going to be hard for you to wear heavy armor. There's going to be a penalty, like most games have some kind of provision to put this in place. But we're going to take the trade-off, because this means we're just going to reduce one more of all damage types and have a critical defense modifier so i'm going to equip the leather armor and be happy about it i'm going to come around the corner and you can see that we're you know about 40 percent of the way to the next level and i'm going to push e i'm just going to keep exploring we found another secret door now i think it's worth mentioning i'm going to switch there's a rat over here switch to my sling and just fire at it i'm going to switch back to my mace and crush that I think it's worth mentioning that secrets, as you can see, it's not like it's just a free room. There can be enemies in here, right? As there are here. But let's take a look at this. Both of these enemies, you'll see that their health bars are yellow, the giant beetle, and the centipede. I mean, when I see enemies like this, I think, oh my god, they're hostile. They're not. They are not hostile. Now, if I move in, okay, and I move in, and I move in, and I move in, and let's try to open this chest, and I open the container... And I'm going to open it again. And there's a helmet and a shield and a flail. This is so fantastic. I'm going to take the shield, the flail, and the helmet. Okay? And I'm looking at this guy. All right? And if I right-click, um, I can also interact with this guy. I can swap places with him because he's friendly or I can attack him. Um, but right now, he's cool. And I'm going to step back and move over. Now... I think we should fight these guys for the experience. I think in general, it's just a good idea to get as much experience as you can. But first, I'm going to step over here and equip some new stuff. So we got a helmet, which just protects against critical hits. That's basically all it does right now. But that's still good, because you don't want to die to a crit. And we're going to equip... Uh, I'm going to use the flail, because it's 1 dice 8, and the small shield. Now, I have um, a 1 dice 7 piercing weapon, if that would be good for me. Um, but that's all I'm going to be really switching to right now. I also have a slash if I need that. But now we have our small shield, which if you look at this, it um, gives you a little bit of defense, okay? It offers protection against melee attacks, right? It gives you a range defense of three, and it gives you a melee defense of five. But what's fantastic for our purposes, too, is that it could do 1 to 2 blunt damage with our shield slam skill. So we could potentially get a little extra damage when we're swinging with our flail. And that is so beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to step all the way over here. And you can see up to the north there's an animal noise. We hear something over there. I'm going to step here and here and here so I can see this. I'm going to switch to my sling. And I am going to fire. I can't fire at the centipede because of the wall and I can fire at the beetle I'm gonna fire at it and now they're both actually hostile which I was not expecting so I need to um, switch and step down oh boy look what they've done they're flanking me rude okay we killed the centipede and now we attack the beetle and check this out you strike the centipede with your flail and hit and you bash it with your shield and kill it so we did um, six five damage total uh, with our flail and then we did one damage with our shield bam we killed that guy and again we hit it with our shield so we are now just doing a whole bunch of extra damage and are more defensive and are attacking faster with our flail than before so this is beautiful um and let's see the area is blocked from autopilot Okay. We have to move to a different area because they're not going to let us um, do that. And, okay, 
Let me show you something. I'm pushing P to bring up this screen. This screen brings up another reason why this game is so fantastic and friendly, which is the kind of autopilot screen. It lets you set markers on the map. Like I said, this is the one is where we started. I pushed M over here to set this marker number two. And this gives you, it's like, here's the sunrise room. And when you mouse over it in the upper left, you can actually see the room over there. Here's the Zvart layer where all those Zvarts were waiting for us. Here's a teleporter in this room. And now here's where I am over here. And it's kind of, you see this white box outlining your field of vision. And the uh, kind of light blue square is you. Now, if you can see anything in red is blocked from autopilot in this region. So I can't use auto explore or autopilot while I'm in the red. But this is a great way. You can just click to move here, okay? Um, but you can't while you're in the red. You have to kind of manually navigate out of this. So we'll do that. We'll manually walk out. And we haven't gone in this room yet. And so there is a bunch of statues and a treasure chest. And let's open this. And you can see, great, we got a bow and a flail. I'll take it both. And 22 money. This is where, what I was talking about, floor one is all about getting gear and starting to learn the game slowly get experience, but mostly get gear for your character so you can get established. All right, so our gear continues to fill up, and we're going to explore, push an E. Jackpot, found a secret door, halfway to level two. Open this up, got a treasure, and we've already been here, leather armor. Okay, another secret door. See, this is what I'm saying. This is one of the reasons I really love uh, Zorbus is, you know, just the secret doors. I enjoy it. Okay, so right away you see that uh, the centipede is cool with us, but that rat is not. And we're just going to kind of pull the rat out, and I'm going to look at it really fast. And just check it out. Harmless. Okay. Then, in that case, I'm going to step in. Now, it just made room for the bat, which I don't care for. And the centipede is now hostile, which I also don't care for. Uh, we're going to have to kill the centipede. Oh, God. Okay. We're going to use health surge. <laughs> it's not going well. Okay, we're going to use... Um, uh, let's see. Can we kill this guy? Yes. Okay. So we got the centipede and we're going to kill the bat. And we're just going to follow the bat. I'm going to switch to my sling and then just try to fire at it and kill it. Okay. So that was way more dangerous than it should have been. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is uh, alt close the door. Go up here, alt close the door. I'm just going to push S to rest uh, until fully healed and then D to rest until stamina recovered. All right. So I need to talk about what happened there. So there was some bad decision making on my part, and luckily I was able to get away without using any consumables. But what ended up happening was the centipede I kind of disregarded, and it turned hostile faster than I was expecting. The rat also did a very clever maneuver. I tried to stop it in the doorway, um, but it came out to make it so that I was fighting more than one at a time and remove that choke point. In some games, like in Cogmine, you can use the doorway as a choke point, but in this you can't uh, because the AI is too slick. So what I should have done is pulled them back perhaps to this hallway here and fought them one at a time. So we survived, but it was tenuous, right? Another secret door and okay, great. A small shield plus one. <laughs> And a morning star and a helmet. All right, we're going to take, um, you know, this and we're going to take this. By the way, you can just click on the numbers uh, that correspond to the items that you want. Okay, and then push enter and just take all of those. So you highlight them by pushing the number. The yellow box goes around which items from the altar that you're taking or what chest or wherever it is. And then you push enter and pull them into your inventory. Right. We also you automatically just loot that money. Now, man, secret doors all over. By the way, another thing uh, that I want to say is look at the progress that we've made on our stone sense in the upper left. You can see that we are like, I don't know, 15, 20% of the way through. That gives you an indication of how big level one is. Something like dungeon crawl or even a, a floor in a dungeon in Cud or 
Tales of Magile. Like, it, they're pretty... They don't take as much time as the floors in this. The floors in Zorbus tend to be larger with more rooms and things. Uh, so just, you know, something to look out for. Now I'm going to go to my inventory. And if I look at the small shield plus one, let's see how it's better than the small shield. So it gives you uh, one attack, six defense, and range defense of floor uh, four. And it does one dice, two plus one damage. Now this would do, um, it gives you... So the plus one adds to the attack bonus if you attack in melee, the defense, the range defense, and the damage as well. So just very, very awesome to get this. We'll equip it. Um, we already have a helmet on, so we don't really need it. And again, you can drop all of this stuff because it doesn't sell for anything. But let's compare our flail, which is one dice eight uh, with a 1.4 rounds or 0.7 attacks uh, per base round to the morning star the morning star is slower um it's interesting 0.8 attack three defense one 4.9 um attack three defense three 4.6 so in every way that i can see the flail just appears to be better than the morning star yeah maybe um the flail is heavier that, that would be the main difference. So the flail is slightly heavier, but we're going to keep our flail then. All right, and let's just keep looking around. And we found a teleporter. Now, teleporters in this, if I bring up the, by pushing P, bring up the map screen again, you'll see the teleporter. I'm in the teleporter room, and it's blue. And if I hit this, okay, um, it'll take me to another part of the map. I haven't explored it yet. So I'm not going to use the teleporter. I want to discover it naturally. I don't want to warp into a situation that's outrageously difficult. Now, another thing I want to mention about this screen that we couldn't really do too much because we were in the uh, red area where you couldn't auto-teleport. Now you'll see if I'm on my character on this uh, auto-travel um, screen by pushing P, auto-pilot, I guess the game calls it, if I move my mouse, you can see that there's like a yellow path that extends from my character, which is the white dot or the white square. And that would be like, if I click over here, my character will just walk there. So you can use this screen to navigate, but you can also navigate by um, using these commands up here, like F1, show portals, um, you know, F2, show areas of notes, show map points. Um, so you can toggle, like, what the map displays. F5 brings back everything, okay? Um, you can look for traps by pushing R. And you can also go to different map points, right? If I push 2, it'll go to map point 2 that I mapped. And you can ma create a map point at any time when you're on the dungeon by pushing M. And you'll see that it says map point 3 set. And if I go back to the autopilot screen... Now there is a map point here, and I can just push three to like auto navigate to that. So it's a beautiful system, and this is what I keep talking about with this game. Like, there's so much friendly quality of life features with the UI. Now we're going to go in here and just poke around. And often, especially early in these mushroom rooms, there, there's no enemies. There's just this mushroom that we kill. We don't even get experience for it. By the way, you can just walk into these mushrooms and blow them up. And we're going to go into the chest and see what happens. And there's like a war pick, a dagger, a rancure, weapons if we want them, but we don't. We're just going to look around. There's a dog. It has a green bar underneath, which means it's friendly. It's not neutral. It's friendly. Um, and I'm going to kind of push tab. And this is a statue, and this is a dog. He's a loyal companion or protector. If I wanted to talk to this dog, um, I could hold control and walk into it, and you get these options, which are the same as right-clicking it. Swap places or attack friendly. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to do anything. Um, okay, and we're just going to keep exploring. And we're taken into this room with some mushrooms and some cadavers. <laughs> And here comes a Zvart. Now, Zvarts are no longer going to be threatening to us. In fact, if I push tab, um, you could see he's mostly harmless. By the way, just as a quick indicator, 
the color of the name of the enemy, okay, that you are engaged against also reflects its difficulty level. So yellow means like mostly harmless, not too bad of a threat, and we crushed it. Same thing for the giant lizard and the bat over here, right? The bat doesn't even have a name on it, um, but that's okay. If I push tab, I can see it. I think it's... I don't know why it doesn't have a name. Anyway, we killed it. Got it. But the lizard currently is not upset with us. Now, another thing I want to do, actually, while I'm in this screen, let's look at the short bow. 0.8 attacks per round, and it does... Um, it has 8 range of a max of 10. All right. And our sling is 0.7 with a max range of 8 as well, okay? But if you look at the bullet, this is where the damage is. So bullets do 1 dice 4 plus 1, and arrows do 1 dice 6. So I'm going to actually equip the short bow and arrows instead of the sling because it's more damage. Um, and we're going to kind of switch to our bow. And the giant lizard rates as dangerous, but I'm going to fire at him anyway, because he's far away, so we have the opportunity uh, to get some attacks on him and soften him up a little bit. I'm going to push W to switch, and we're going to just uh, try to take him down. He's running away, and we got him. And you could see that we're like 75% of the way to the next level. I'm going to go ahead and just walk around. Um, there are these skull piles, which, whatever, scary decorations. It's Halloween, I guess. And pick up our arrows and just look around. Oh, we found a trap. And we detected it. Uh, and that's, you know, a function of our searching. And so don't walk on that square. Now, if... Oh, okay. Here comes a germalane and a novice adventurer. All right. So, I kind of moved a little bit too quickly. Anyway, I'm going to step into this hallway. We're going to take a hit, but this will allow us to kind of... Um, yeah, he's got a... What did he do to us? He threw a threw a spear at us. That hurts. Um, this will allow us to fight one at a time. This thing is not hard. We killed it with a bow. I'm going to switch back. Here's the novice adventurer gone. Here's another novice adventurer. Let's just push five. Wait for it. And it's switching. God, you hear the heavy breathing. Hilarious. And it's it's actually running away. It closed the door on us, which is kind of funny. And we got it. And we found the secret door. And there's a longbow plus one. Boom. Take it. Thank you. Much better. Okay. Let's go in. Let's look at the longbow plus one. The longbow plus one is the same speed as our previous weapon, but it has longer range. Okay. Um, and it has a base damage of 1, which uh, the short bow does not have. So we're going to switch to that. Now we have a long bow. It still uses arrows, and we're good. Look at our encumbrance. We can afford to just keep equipping this heavier stuff without concern because of our strength, um, our body, and we are, uh, you know, a stocky warrior dwarf. So this is our game. Now, uh, there's a large crab here and a giant beetle harmless and harmless okay now they're going to turn hostile eventually so we just have to make a decision on when do we want to attack them and i'm going to attack them now because we can just fight them from range and hopefully kill them got it all right switch back to my other weapon now something that's really fun to do in this game that i want to explain and <laughs> yet more onto my love affair of the UI for this game. If you push spacebar at any time, it brings up this loot screen. And what it does is it shows you in the upper left box, that's me on the map standing there with the green box around me. The bottom left quadrant is the mini map. And then in the middle, there's a column that has every drop that's been seen so far. You can search this by simply typing. So if you're like looking for a club, for example, you can just type in club and find it. And you can navigate to any of these items by using the arrows or the mouse and then click on it and your character will travel to it to pick it up. There's also in this right column, 
explanation of how to filter, how to search, how to look for different things. What I love about this is it allows you to look through all drops that you've seen just to make sure that you haven't dropped anything good. If you push one, for example, it just will filter to anything that's like a plus one item or two for plus two. That way you can just like focus in and see, is there any magical items that I didn't pick up yet? And no, not really. Nothing that's good. But I love this screen. Like, so, for example, if I want to pick up this arrow that I fired, um, I will select it. And you can see I've got it highlighted right here. In the upper left, you can see my character, the path I will take to get there. And in the lower left, you'll see on the minimap, it's just like showing you where this item is on the floor. And if I click on it, my character will just walk over and pick it up. Awesome. Pick up the rest of these arrows here. And I'm ready to keep exploring. Okay, so if I now uh, bring up my autopilot screen by pushing P, you can see my character is in a teleporter room right here. And this teleporter is blue. And the other teleporter that we found is blue. So generally, the teleporters are color-coded. So if I step onto this, um, it does give you a dialog box that says, do you want to step onto it, you know, to help you avoid accidentally stepping on it and we're just going to say yes and oh my goodness not where we expected right so if i look here um, i've set a map marker down here and we are at another teleporter and it is the same color but look at this there's more than one teleporter so it's not just that one teleporter goes to its uh, twin and then there's other teleporters this could happen so I'm going to step back in and we teleport back and then I'm going to step in and we teleport back so in fact this teleporter is actually related to the teleporter to the north but not connected to this teleporter over here so it does have a twin but they're not different in color and this is just part of the joy of teleporters that you have to figure out, which is why I don't usually use teleporters unless I've explored fully and I use them to escape as a you know means of last resort because you don't 100% really know where they're going to take you. Now, in this case, we're in a room and we've got arrows, which are amazing. We were kind of, I don't want to say running low on arrows, but we didn't have a ton and now we have more. So I'm just going to auto-explore, and you can just see we just absolutely got ourselves up to 83 arrows. So that should be enough for some time. I'm going to switch to my longbow, in fact, uh, for exploring so that uh, I can... come across enemies at range. Now you'll see it's not letting me auto-explore because this area is blocked from auto-explore. And if you push the autopilot, you'll see again, all of this flooring is red to prevent you from doing the auto-explore. This is back in the casket with the difficult undead that we opened from earlier. And we're just going to keep on looking around. I still can't auto-explore here, so we're going to manually walk over. We found a secret door. And I'm going to make a determination on whether or not I want to go to the secret door, but I'm actually going to just kind of explore the hallway itself first. Another secret door. I'm just kind of going around, making sure that there's no uh, other enemies just kind of walking around in the hall. And let's just take... You can look on the map. You see that there are these, like, kind of rings... Uh, on the dungeon floor that are connected and making a pattern. And let's see, we have found a uh, Zorbo. Okay. And what is a Zorbo? It is a small carnivorous bear covered in brown gray fur. So is it like a koala? I mean, it's carnivorous. So I don't know what to say about that. But what I will say is it's asleep. And it's not openly hostile. So we'll just walk by it. And now we can auto-explore again because you can see up here we have moved on to a different section that is out of the red area from the autopilot. Uh, meaning we can use auto-explore. Now, 
There's a teleporter up here. I'm going to go into this room. Boy, there's been a lot of carnage. Um, we kept, we got some bullets. And here comes uh, some myconids. And they're saying, go away, dwarf. And they're dangerous, right? But they're not necessarily hostile. They just don't like us. So maybe they fought people in here or things in here. I don't know. Adventurers always cause trouble. Well, that's possible. Um, I'm going to go over here. We can just walk past them. Now, there was a teleporter, and I could take the teleporter. And, you know, it seems like, oh, well, it'll just go to its twin over on in the west of the dungeon. But if you look at my stone sense, I've only explored a little bit over 50%. So there's a very good chance that there's even more teleporters to be found. And, you know... I don't want to go someplace unexplored. Here's a human skeleton, so I'm just going to shoot at him. And then we're going to switch to our other weapon, our flail. Our flail should dominate this guy. And yes, indeed, we leveled up with that satisfying all caps level up indicator. All right. So we now have two points that we can spend to raise a skill. Okay. But we can't raise melee because it would require too much. Now, when you mouse over one of these skills, it'll tell you what it does. So it says melee is used for melee and unarmed combat. Um, and it basically will help you doing anything when you're fighting in melee. Now, we could boost our ranged if we wanted to. And when you can raise a stat, you'll see these two arrows appear. And then you can put points into it. And it would take two points for me to go from one to two. Or you can take them back by pushing the left arrow. And I'm actually thinking, well, do I want dodge? Do I want search? Do I want to get better at disabling traps? To be all honest, for me with this character, um, I'm going to continue and save my points for melee. I want to be um, better at using melee. And the other indicator here is, check this out, at the bottom... It says talents with melee requirement. Charge needs melee three. Dual strike needs melee three. Dual wield needs melee three, right? And most of these, you need to have a melee skill of three to acquire. So we want to have a melee skill of three so we can learn a, a talent related to combat. And so I'm going to skip and I'm just going to say continue. I'm gonna, you can save your points. I'm going to sandbag these for the next level. We say, okay. And then now we get, um, we don't get a talent point. We have zero. So we can't get great reach or any of these boosts or anything. Um, but the most important thing that happened when we leveled up is that we went from 14 to 24 hit points and 10 to 20 stamina. So I'm actually just going to rest until fully healed on both of those. And that is a tremendous increase. Like, you know, effectively doubling our health and stamina is beautiful. Remember, stamina for us is like our de facto healing spell. I'm going to switch to my arrow and just fire at this centipede. And we killed it. And we found a little table. And oh my god, it was trapped. Um, and it, it was an arrow trap, but we dodged it. So we didn't get hurt. And now we can open this up and... There's a book of Zorbus 3, and there's a bastard sword which you can use one or two-handed and a club. And it's a one-dice nine weapon, which is actually pretty good, but it is indeed slashing damage. I'll take it, but I'm going to keep using my flail. Now, what did we get? We also got a bunch of traps. If I go to inventory, you'll see that we got the book of Zorbus 2. I can click on this and get information about the story. And we're going to need Book of Zorbus 1 and 2 to get more information to fill in. But we also got these trap kits. So we can um, set this on a door or a tile on the dungeon floor and use this to help us if we lure enemies across it. All right. So if we come to a particularly difficult area, we might want to use a trap and strategize yelling or getting the enemy's attention with an arrow so that they have to come across this if we want 
We also got a flask of slime, which means we can coat our weapon with slime. Um, and, you know, it'll give us a slimy buff. Or we could coat our weapon with melee, and it lasts for 10 to 20 hits. We can also put it on arrows. Um, so if we want, we can make some slime arrows or some uh, do some damage with poison. We just killed that guy with one shot um, on either our melee or our bow. And I'm actually uh, going to keep it as is and save it for a difficult foe. What does this say? Clean up the room after use. Okay, so if you want, you can um, toggle this. And you see we made an ape right here. And the ape is not hostile. Um, but we can shoot this guy anyway. No experience points are awarded from killing this creature because he was summoned. So, all right. Let's go ahead and auto-explore. And let's see what we can find. All right, there's a spider. I'm going to shoot it. Just try to take it down early. We got it. And I stepped onto a teleport trap, and I was teleported. So when this happens... What you want to do is immediately just stop, don't move, look at your surroundings, and see where you are on the minimap. Now, luckily for us, you can see on the minimap in the lower left, we're not too far away from areas that we've explored. So I'm going to walk over here, and there is a guy down here, but he is not challenging. Now, I don't know. Looks like he's not coming up here, so we got some money. Got an arrow. Uh, no. Okay, so I accidentally walked onto the steps, but luckily it tells you, you know, do you want to walk down? And no, we don't want to walk down. When you go down the steps to level 2, you can never come back up. You're done with level 1. And if you want to get strong in this game, it is my belief that you most likely, at least with this character, you want to explore every single thing on the level you can. We get an experience bonus if we fill up our stone sense, and... We want to make sure that we can ramp up and be strong enough for what lies below. Um, always remember, only death is real. Wow. That's deep. All right, here comes a kobold. Now, you're, I'm finding a kobold, okay? You see how the kobold there, in the upper right of its sprite, there's a capital R in yellow? That means it has a ranged weapon, and it's going to shoot at me in, at range. Um, he also uh, yelled and said alarm an intruder so anybody that's with him uh, will come fight us and he's going to actively try and run and go get help so he's like a scout or he just has this imperative to go try and alert other enemies to join in and that could be a disaster but luckily we killed him quickly and he decided not to shoot at us which is very wonderful all right, and remember, you can always just push spacebar and see if there's any treasure that you're interested in getting. Like, did I miss anything? And it doesn't look like anything too significant has been dropped. You can turn these braziers on or off by bumping into them. And they do make light, which can be helpful um, for our character. If you're trying to be sneaky, then you maybe want to turn those off. Okay, we got a guy over here got him and, oh and he had a key he had a kobold key so sometimes you'll find doors that are locked and they need a kobold key and luckily we found one i've had games where i can't find the key and it's brutal all right so let's go back here and just continue to explore and i'm looking for hostiles looks okay and we got some money. Alright. And there's a big skull. And it says, do not abuse. Of course not. We would never dream of it. Uh, we got some bullets. And again, I'm just auto-exploring and running around. Now we went past another teleporter. There's an animal noise over here. There's a humanoid zombie. I'm going to shoot at this guy. Uh, we'll just switch to our other weapon. 
Got him. Large animal. It's an elephant, okay? So an elephant is actually something that is uh, difficult, but we're not going to fight it. You could fight it if you want experience. I'm going to leave it there for now because I don't want to actively anger that thing until I'm ready. All right? We got a bunch of enemies here. Ash method. Killed it. Got the bat. It's running. It's dead. All right. There's a trap in the middle. Oh, we found another teleport trap. Okay. We're back in the room. Now, let's just walk around this room and see... Wow, we got another trap and we're, we're stuck in the slime. We're fighting um, a humanoid skeleton. It says it's mostly harmless, and there we go. We got it. It gave us a ton of experience, which is fantastic. And we're going to just push um, S to rest until healed. All right, so now they're all gone. What's going on here is you have a bunch of coffins that you can open. And, of course, you could get treasure... Or you could get an enemy, or you could get both. So, open these one at a time, right? Let's start at the bottom, and then open it, and there's bones. That's not good, but there's money. Open it, and there's a small shield. We have better. We're going to leave the bones. Okay, uh, we got a trap with a bunch of rats. Now, this doesn't look hard, but it can be. These are surrounding us. So, we're going to kill one rat, and try to kill another and our character is, like, capable of handling those rats. You notice that they don't give you experience, by the way. They're summoned from the trap. I had a wizard starting out. Like, a wizard would get very, very wrecked by being surrounded by enemies like that. But our character is now getting to the point where they're slightly strong enough to handle it. I'm going to rest until healed. Uh, there's another bastard sword. There's money. We're mostly just looking for treasure... And trying to get money. We got a flask of extinguishing. Okay. And we found a tower shield. Okay, I'm going to take this. There's also a great sword, which I'll take. A little bit of money. And a hoop pack, which is a uh, staff. And we don't want that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my tower shield. So the tower shield um, requires... A body of 13 and we have a 14 and it hurts your melee attack or no no i'm sorry attack minus four in melee but gives you defense seven and it gives you one dice four damage so um it's very very good at blocking so we want to think do i want to use this right um and i'm going to try it and i'm going to just experiment and see how much my damage is mitigated okay we got ambushed so look at this in this room we've been ambushed and there are all kinds of enemies there is a bandit a young bandit young bandit young bandit and young bandit so they're ambushing us so the first thing we want to do is look at the map and try to find a choke point i see one not super close by but uh, maybe close enough. So we want to move somewhere. I'm going to try to move up to the northeast. So I'm going to walk over here. And they're hitting us, unfortunately. But I need to get to a place. Yeah, okay. So if I keep going north, I will eventually get into this hallway here. Beautiful. And now we have them one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm just going to push five to wait. You cannot make attacks. Oh, I'm, I got my wrong weapon. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Have my longbow out. Okay. Fantastic. So we hit him with our shield for four. And we hit him with our flail. All right, so... We're doing very, very well. Great plan, boys. Now that old jerk is going to butcher us. That's hilarious. So they're, like, realizing that they're getting annihilated and they're frustrated by it. They're not hard, but if they all can surround you, then you're in bad shape. I'm going to shoot this one with a bow and switch back. Okay, great. 
And we got some money, and I'm just going to rest until healed. Now, there's another bandit down here that we'll go clear out. All right. How can someone be so annoying? Why can't you be a good boy and just die already? I don't want to. Got him. All right, and let's just go ahead and rest until healed. Perfect. All right, and there's a Sturge, and we're going to just shoot it, or try to shoot it. And I'm going to switch. Got it. Good chunk of experience. <laughs> hey, Dwarf Warrior. Drink and die, stranger. Do you need help? Excellent. So what you can do is you can, if you find people in the dungeon of any kind of race and they're friendly, you can push control, walk into them, and you can look at their character sheet, okay, and see what they're all about. They're level 2. They're very similar to us. They're actually, their stats are better than us. Um, their skills are better than us. They're very, very strong, right? And you can also see, like, what equipment they have. He's got good equipment. He's got talents. And then you can click recruit. Mm. And now you have a ally. Allies make you super strong in this game. They do, as far as I understand it, take some of your experience, which can be a pain. But the fact that we basically um, have someone who can help us I feel like, at least early, it really boosts our survivability, right? I like to have allies. And up here in the upper right, you can see this is my follower. And it has his health and his stamina. And you can always see him on the map. Now, you can push control and then one to change his AI. So you can have him stay here. You can say him follow you. You can have him regroup, which is kind of like, let's meet up somewhere else if we need to run away. And I'm going to have him follow me. You can also give them orders, um, and if you want to know how to do that, you can push H, and you can push H again to go to the tutorial page here, and we're going to go over to the page that is talking about your companions, right? And it says that uh, you can use Alt and 1 to go through the tactics for your companion so you can change their strategy from like ranged to melee to um you know hit the target that i'm at tr travel to an unexplored or an, i'm sorry an explored location um and you can give them these other kinds of commands here if you're interested and let's see so if i want to say like alt zero okay um i can change him to and you see in the upper right it's kind of small but either ranged or melee. We want him on melee. All right, Alt-1 does the same thing. And I can right-click on him, and you can give him items. So you can, like, if you find equipment, you can give it to him to upgrade him. Um, but he's good right now. I'm just going to explore, and you'll see he follows us around. And here's some bad guys here. I'm going to step back, and he's switching to ranged. I'm going to just push 5 to wait. And you can see, like, he's shooting, and he just killed both of those things, right? And we got experience. Now, it's less experience than if we would have killed it by ourselves, but it's better than dying, right? So we got a shield, a scimitar, hide armor. Let's just check this stuff out. Now, I'm getting to the point where I might be encumbered. My armor is leather, which is 222. Hide armor says... 222, 500 stones, 400 stones, right. So we're going to go ahead and um, I'm just right-clicking this stuff um, to drop it. I don't need it anymore. And remember, it doesn't sell for anything. You can see our encumbrance going down as I just throw this stuff onto the ground. Fantastic. Uh, okay. So I think... Yeah, let's just keep exploring if we can. And let me check. Here's where we are. If you look uh, at our stone sense, we're almost completely done with this floor. So I'm going to actually just kind of walk down here manually. We're going to um, 
we can't auto explore anything anymore because the area we need to get to down by map marker seven is in the red so we've got to go there we have to at least step on all of this to uncover it for the stone sense so i'm just going to make sure that i'm filling in the map and let's go into this area here there's another teleporter but this teleporter um actually goes to the shop so um this will take you to Carrillo, the trading demiplane. Step onto it. There's a chance the portal to Carrillo on the current dungeon level is destroyed after three visits, it says. Okay? So we're going to say no, avoid the teleporter. Whenever you see this 20-sided die in a teleporter, so that if this 20-sided die is pointed on the floor, painted on the floor, rather, and you see this teleporter, you know that what that means is this is the shop. So this game is great because the shop exists in, as it says, a demiplane. And you can go there, sell stuff, buy stuff, and then come back to the level. And you get to visit and revisit it. Like in Dungeon Crawl, the shop closes when you leave. This shop is temporary, but at least it gives you a few visits before you can, uh, before it disappears. And now that you know where it is, you know, we can think about selling stuff. Now, most of our stuff is not great for selling, but we have been just collecting money. And in fact, we have 254 money. That's not very much. That's not going to buy a lot. But at the same time, um, I think there's a very good chance that I want to go and buy some potions. Uh, Warhammer, Warpick. Now, we're using a... Um, a Warhammer is 1 dice 8. A Warpick is 1 dice 6. I think our flail is uh, better. So we're going to go around and look in here. And... What did we find? A big chest... It has some items in it that we don't need, and our stone sense is almost there. I'm just going to push P, and what I do at this point is I just look around. You can see over here on the map, it's not fully explored. Let's go ahead and go to this portion, um, and we're still not done with the map, so where do we need to go to get it filled in? Right over here. All right, so I'm going to kind of walk in that direction. There shouldn't be really any enemies left for us to have to fight. There's, like, some friendly animals. Okay, and now we come over here. And that's filled in. Let's see. We are so close to getting it. We're missing, like, one square or something. Um, I'm going to go over here and go through here, look at the map again. Where is it that is being missed? It's probably in this red zone. I'm going to just make sure I didn't already get it. Nah, okay. Open the door. It was all noisy. Let's step on the teleporter. And it takes us uh, over here to this teleporter. Yep. And let's go through here. There it is. This is what we needed. Secret door. Wreck this skeleton... And we did it. So we got 300 experience. It says you have just completely explored the level. Boom. I got um, hit by the trap. My lantern went out. So uh, we'll have to get another lantern, I suppose. And we get a short sword plus one and a dungeon survival guide. Great. And a bunch of other potions. We got a potion of blink and a po four potions of healing uh, at this point, which is fantastic. So I'm going to um, get out of this area that's blocked from autopilot for a moment. Uh, let's kind of go up here. And we're going to look for a lantern. Right? And I'm going to go to this one. And I'm going to pick this up. And I'm going to go to my inventory. 
And I'm going to say, oh, I had a bunch of lanterns. Anyway, I'm going to put on a new lantern so we can see. So now we've replaced our lantern and we're good to go. Fantastic, I say. Okay, so we have our lantern replaced. The floor is completely explored. And so now it's time to go to the shop. So I'm going to push P and you can see the whole map is filled in. It's got labels for each of the rooms. In magenta, you see the teleporters and the stairs. Um, and what we can do is just say, take me to the shop if you don't mind. And over here on the right column, you can see that S um, is the shop teleporter. Okay. And we can say, enter S. Um, Hmm, I wonder why that's not working. Anyway. Oh, because we can't... Uh, that's right, because it's in the red. So if, if the Carrillo teleporter was not in an anti-explore area, we could make it. But we'll just go close by. And let's go into the teleporter. Here we go. Okay. So now we're in to this realm, and they will talk to you and explain, you know, what's going on here. And basically, the like they say, the only rule is don't fight anybody in here or you will get annihilated. So you can walk to each shop and then you click on their table, uh, just bump into it, and you can see what they're selling, how much it costs, okay? And then you can see your own stuff and you can sell things to them if you want. Now, really all what I would like would be some um, potions of healing or potions of blink, right? Um, and no, I don't want that. Um, so they are selling some potions of healing, which we could buy. We have four of them, though. And I don't really care to sell necessarily anything to them, but I want to buy um, a potion of blink. I'm buying one. Okay. Um, and that cost a bunch, but we did it. So now we have another potion of blink, and you can see I'm pretty much out of cash. But, uh, no, I bought three. Never mind. Um, I don't know why they didn't stack, um, but I think I bought a stack of two from them because that's the most I could afford. And now we have another one, so we have three total. So this is fantastic. I'm going to just leave and just be like, sweet. And now it will stack everything together. So... I've got three potions of blink, which is tremendous. And you can go around now and just auto explore if you want. And you can check out all of the different uh, places to go within this floor. I'll leave it to you to explore the inn. Do not steal from anybody's belongings, by the way, unless you want trouble in this floor. Don't, don't do that unless you want to see how fast you can die. And then the, there's an inn to the left. And this layout will change, but basically there's the same kind of stuff here. They have this shop that has, I mean, look at this awesome stuff. Boots of speed, ring of holiness, such good stuff, but it's so expensive. We can't really afford it, but they have more blink potions and more cool stuff here. I'm going to click down here, and you can see this shop. Um, bam, and they have, like, armor and weapons. Man, such cool things but we can't again really afford it so we're just going to leave and now we've seen the shop we've got three potions of blink four potions of healing we're level two we fully explored this level so it's time to go down right so i'm going to kind of leave the um area that we can't explore auto explore in and we're going to go to the stair down and so let's just go ahead and can you take me to the nearest stair down? I push D, and we're there. And I'm going to click on this, and it says, will you go down to level 2? And you say yes. And now we're on dungeon 2. And you see our buddy follows us down, and we're ready to go. So everyone, I think this is a really good start to understanding Zorbus. We've completed our first level. Uh, we gone to the shop. We've used the teleporters. We've used auto explore. We've explained most of the game's functions. And... Level 1, like I said, is all about just leveling up and getting your baseline equipment. Now it's time to really start to improve our gear, and the game is going to become more and more difficult as we go. De level 2 is like pretty manageable, but harder than 1 for sure, and then by the time you get to level 3, it's going to start 
ratcheting up and you may die. In fact, you will die. This game is very, very brutal, but so much fun. I hope you found this guide to be useful. Let me know if you want to see more of this guide and I can make some more episodes. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.